Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're in the greenhouse getting ready to pot up some dahlia tubers. I'm a total sucker. I've got a ton in storage. We'll check on those today as well. I'll show you how they're doing. But Aaron and I were out and about and I saw these beautiful dahlia tubers and I had to get one bag of each type. Isn't that gorgeous? Just to try. And I know it's very early to be doing this sort of project, but now that we have heat in this greenhouse, I'm wanting to experiment just to see what we can get away with. Couple different methods of starting your dahlia tubers early. First off, you need soil temperatures of at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. So like today, I'm gonna pot them here in the greenhouse. We don't keep it at a steady 60 in here yet, uh, but I'll pot them out here today, move them into the studio where it's 70 degrees plus in there usually. Uh, I'll get them to all germinate and then we will kick the heat up in here a little bit, like 65-ish, 65, 70, um, and we'll let them grow on in here where they can receive tons of natural light that's the other thing if you are going to be growing these on early then you do need a proper source of light in order to be healthy so the methods you can pot them up like this i'm using used nursery containers kind of potting them how you would normally plant them outside covering the whole tuber you know one tuber or one clump of tubers per pot so i'm hoping for one nice plant out of each pot or you can do what's called pre-sprouting and you can line them up so you put a little soil at the bottom of a tray line your tubers just side by side laying them on their sides and you keep the eye exposed though which I'll show you the anatomy of a dahlia tuber here in a second you keep the eye exposed and only cover the body of the tuber with a little bit more soil lightly water them and they will pr sprout pretty quickly in warm temperatures that way uh, that way you can see which ones are viable or not but I feel like in that case like it's a good way to sprout a ton of them with not not taking up as much space. But then, if, you know, starting this early, I would have to go ahead and then pot them up into something anyway. So I figure I'm skipping a step by just potting them normally to begin with. All right, so let's get into one of these bags and I'll show you what a tuber looks like. I spread several of them out here just so you could see how different tubers can look. I mean, on the same clump here, you have a tuber that's long and more slender and one that's really short and round, like that. And sometimes when you buy them, they'll come in a clump like this where there are several tubers, which this could be divided. We will do a video later on when we take all of our dahlia tubers out of storage and show you how we divide them. The most important thing is just to make sure that all three components of your tuber are intact. So the body right here, which is the more bulbous part. So like on this one, this is the body. On this one, it's the round part right here. And then the neck also needs to be intact, which is where it slenders down right before it attaches to the rest of the clump. And the necks are really fragile. You have to be very careful with those. It's very easy to break them. And then they do need an eye or a growth point, which is usually found right above the neck. And it's usually more of a swollen kind of raised area. You get better at finding them as you handle more dahlias, but it's right here. That's where the growth point is. So as long as you have those three parts, you'll see some growth. And then as an example of one that's not viable, you'll see the body of the tuber right here. You come up, then it got broken off at the neck right here and there's no growth point up there. So this one you wouldn't get anything out of. And then for those of you who just wanna see how we pot up a dahlia tuber, I'll do one container right now real quick. And then we're gonna run into the root cellar and grab 14 more of the ones I'm storing because I've got 30 pots here. I wanna get 30 going, I've got 16 sitting here. So uh, anyway, let's pot one up. I'm using the organic potting mix with a little bit of starter fertilizer mixed in. All right, so here's a close look. This is a used gallon sized nursery container. I'm gonna put a little bit of potting soil at the bottom, a little sprinkle of starter fertilizer, kind of mix that in. Here's our clump of tubers that we're gonna nest right on top of the potting soil. And if you're planting a clump like this, you wanna make sure that the eyes or the growth points are facing up, which this is last year's stock, so that's a good indicator as to which direction to plant it. If you have a single tuber, you can just lay it on its side if you need to, just to make sure that that growth point is facing up. Then we're gonna fill in all the rest of the way with potting soil. This soil was frozen a few days ago. It's thawed out and warmer now, but it's still really wet. So I'm actually not gonna even water these in today. I don't wanna to introduce too much moisture. Okay, just like that. So the top of the clump of tubers is probably two inches below the soil surface there. 
it's perfect. That's how we plant them outside. So there's really not a lot to this process. It is important to label them. Um, so before I plant any more, I'm gonna go grab labels as well as the rest of the tubers. Um, but like I said, if you're dealing with wet potting soil like I am today, uh, dahlia tubers don't like to sit in a ton of water. So I'm not gonna even water these in uh, because I feel like there's enough moisture in that soil. If you're dealing with regular potting soil that's nice and dry, you do wanna water them in lightly. Also, when you're potting them up like this, they don't need light until you start to see them germinate. You start to see leafy growth up above the soil surface. At that point, it's important to get them under a good source of light. And that's the point where we will kick the heat up in here and we'll move them out here uh, so that they can get all, all day long light. Let's run to the barn and check on our uh, dahlia tubers and get some labels. And can you believe that we're planting dahlia tubers when it looks like this outside still? So here we are at the root cellar. It's currently 42 degrees, 43 <laughs> and 52% humidity. And we've got a lot going on in here still. So in this corner, we have onions, which are storing beautifully, like beautifully, no softness, no sprouting. So onions, uh, garlic, dried chili peppers. There are potatoes down in these baskets. We've got squash right here, which boy, I need to be better about going through some of these. I don't know why we haven't. Uh, more garlic up in that basket. And then on this side, we have sunflower seeds. We have garlic in here, uh, apple cider, sweet potatoes. Let's see, I don't think we have very many sweet potatoes left, but whew, yeah, you can see them in there. Ranunculus and anemone corms in those containers and in here. I'm gonna be pre-sprouting and growing some of these on early as well. So you'll probably see that like soon. And then uh, carrots and beets down here. The only crate along the back here that's not dahlias is this one, which is potatoes. Yeah, which have started to sprout a little bit. The rest of these, the box, the crates, all of this is dahlias. So I think this one might be the easiest one to get into. So what we do is we use our bulb crates uh, that have airflow. So anything with good airflow, we double layer with burlap um, for kind of to keep everything contained. And then we use vermiculite as our storage medium and we reuse it from year to year. So really it's a one-time purchase uh, because in the end we kind of just spread it out, let it dry and then put it in big garbage sacks and get it out the next year. But it's perfect because it retains enough moisture um, to keep them happy. Like we lightly moisten this before we pack away all the tubers. We've got cafe con leches in here. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, see how good those look? no desiccation. I did see when I initially opened it up, it looks like this one was exposed to a little bit more air. See how it's all wrinkly? That side was exposed to air while this side right here was down in the vermiculite. See the difference there? This will be fine. It'll be totally fine. Uh, but yeah, I think here in our area, humidity isn't as much of a concern as them drying out. But it would be like they can rot easy if you get too much moisture in the medium to begin with, or if you have really high humidity and not without a good way to control it. I actually feel like this one right here is an excellent example of the anatomy. So you've got your body down here, the more thick spots, the necks, and then see that right there, that kind of darker spot that's a little bit swollen, that's our growth point right there. So like this one may not grow, it might, see how it's cracked, sometimes they it's surprising. But you could, if you wanted to, you could divide this type of thing and you could cut right in between these two tubers making sure to cut, leaving that eye connected to this one, and then the eye for this one over here connected to this. So you could have two plants if you wanted. Anyway, I'm just encouraged to see how good these are looking. Some of them are wild. Pull a couple more out. Yeah, look at how gorgeous. Boy, I haven't tried out a ton of different storage methods, but this one works really well for us. Okay, so I'm gonna root around in these crates for a minute, try to get a few different varieties out to plant. Whoa, dang, Clyde's choice, beast. Oh, got some peat moss in this one. Oh, this one already has some growth on it. Oh, hoo -hoo. this is called Kiss Me. I am just so encouraged by how wonderful these look. They're beautiful. Kind of makes these look sad. <laughs> 
And you know, all of them come out of the ground a little bit different. I did grab some cafe LA's here, which typically are a little bit harder to store. They want to dry out more than the others. Um, you can see that there is some wrinkling going on here, but they're still very firm, very nice, and they're large. We planted 300 clumps of dahlias last year, and in the one season, they're such a prolific crop uh, that those clumps at least doubled, if not tripled, sometimes even more than that, in just one growing season under the ground. So we have a lot of dividing yet to do this spring. It's going to be a big job, and I've got 15 to 20-ish new varieties we're going to be putting in. So we'll probably, I'm not going to enlarge the size of our dahlia patch. It's going to be the same size because there's no reason we're not growing them to sell them we grow them to give them away mostly and use them in our in our own home uh, so i will be not getting rid of any varieties but i'll probably grow less of some varieties i have a ton of white a lot of big dinner plate whites which are beautiful beautiful but i don't need a ton of them so i'll probably pare that down in order to make room for some new varieties it'll be like that every year i think so i've got three six nine twelve thirteen fourteen which is what i needed i think I'm gonna have to divide one clump today because this won't fit down in our gallon size container. So I'm gonna go grab some clippers and we'll get this one cut in half. So I'll go twos. Okay, so I'm just inspecting this clump right here to see where the cut might be best made. I see there's already a, an eye right here kind of growing on. So sometimes you have to sacrifice some of the tubers in order to get what you need out of here. So here we go. So here's the original clump. Here's what I just cut off. So you can see the cut end right there. They look really great. The necks are intact, growth point here and here. So this is perfect. Let's see where else. This was just such a large clump. There we go. This one is pretty desiccated. You can see that. I'm gonna just cut that one off. So this one looks really good too. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll cut this one again, but you can see the body, the neck on both of these. Growth point right here, growth point right here. So if we put our clippers right in between, there we go. Sometimes when you buy them, you'll get them like this, just a single tuber, which is totally fine. And then this one, you could cut here. Body, neck, growth point. Body, this one doesn't have much of a neck, but you can see a growth point here, and then there's a growth point in here. So that one clump turned into five plants. We'll do that again when we actually do our dividing video. We'll get some really good close-up shots so you can really see some of the detail. I know it can be super frustrating and intimidating to cut apart your tubers that you've worked hard to get. So anyway, that'll happen a little bit later. Now I need more pots. Okay, so at this point, I just need to get the rest of them planted using the same planting method I just showed you. I'm gonna go ahead and make my labels first before my hands and the marker and all of our surfaces are all dirty out here. And then I'm gonna line the floor in the studio just with some plastic um, to, to save the floor. I'm just gonna line them up in there where they can be nice and cozy and toasty, warm. Here they are, all 30 of them. Isn't that exciting? 
So we'll be back in here doing this exact same thing in a month and a half or so. So we're a little bit more on a regular time schedule. Uh, but I do think I'm gonna water these in. See how this one is kind of dry. The first bag of soil was fairly wet, but the rest was normal. So I thought, well, I'll pop them on this table, water them lightly just to get the soil settled, make sure they all have moisture, and then we'll move them into the studio. You know, while we're at it, I'm gonna show you the lettuce and spinach that we seeded in here not long ago. Also, it took two cubic feet of soil on the dot to do all 30 of these containers. Right there, those are my empty bags two one cubic foot bags. So right here in this raised bed, you can see a little bit of green. Isn't that exciting? So we've got spinach in this third. We have a lettuce variety in this third and then a lettuce variety in this third, which I don't see any action. I'm assuming that since this one's up, this one should be up. It was a really old packet of seeds and I just thought yeah, this is an experiment anyway, so we'll try it. Uh, so I'm gonna get another variety of lettuce out here and get it planted because these are gorgeous and it's plenty warm in here to get them up and I don't cover them or anything. They're just growing like this on their own. We can look at what temperature it's, it is right now. So we have it set to 50 in the day. Right now it's up to 55. But typically, even though we have it set at 50, it goes up to about 60 every day, even though our temperatures outside are in the low 30s actually, that's our high. So that's really exciting. So let's get these watered and put in the studio. tucked in. I did make a tiny bit of a mess right there. I'm gonna wait till it dries to vacuum it up. Well, this is gonna just be a really fun experiment. I can't wait to share with you guys what happens. Uh, so they're just gonna hang out in here in the heat until we see germination. It probably will be a couple of weeks before we see any growth. So I did water them in today. I probably won't hit them with water until we start seeing some growth. And that's what we do when they're outside. You know, we plant the tubers, water them in, and then turn on our drip once we start seeing them pop through the soil. So I'm gonna treat them exactly the same way. If I see anything looking particularly dry, I'll give it a little touch of water, but not, not a lot, like not enough to run out the bottom of the can. I did put plastic down to protect our floor, uh, so everything should be good there. But the reason why I have them in here as opposed to just leaving them out in the greenhouse, because we do have heat out there, but I don't wanna keep it 20 degrees warmer than we have it currently. Uh, just for these plants. If we had more things going on out there, more projects, more production, I would consider it, but it doesn't seem very efficient to heat the whole greenhouse to you know close to 70 when I have that temperature in here. Uh, so anyway, we don't need to move them out until they need light. When I get ready to move these out, my vegetables will probably be ready to be potted up and moved out as well. My tomatoes and peppers and cucumber, and they're gonna need it to be warmer too. So it'll feel a little bit uh, more appropriate when I have more stuff going on out there. The things I watch dahlias for inside because I've started them from seed. And if that's the way that you wanna start them because it is more budget friendly, it's so easy to start dahlias from seed. You get flowers the first year, you get little clumps of tubers that are the cutest things. Uh, it's really quite amazing how great they grow. But they are kind of a spider mite attractor when they're inside, so that's something that I'll be keeping a close eye. They won't be in here long enough, I don't think, to have anything like that. And I don't have spider mites in here currently, knock on wood, um, so hopefully that's not something we deal with. But typically in greenhouse environments, because these will be out there for so long before we plant them out, it's something I'm gonna have to keep a sharp eye out because they tend to, when they don't have all the airflow and everything that they do outside, they tend to be a little bit more susceptible to things like that. So maybe it might be something different in your area than it is mine, but spider mites tend to be what attacks dahlias if 
they're gonna be attacked by anything. Outside though, they're fine. I've never had any insect issues on our dahlias that are out in our cut garden. And just so you know, this is what's going on below me while I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> He's like starved for attention all the time. All the time starved. You look starved. Like I'm trying to tell you about dahlias and his claws are like digging into my legs the whole time. And that's gonna be it for today's project. Like I said, we will be, when we were in the root cellar, I showed you the anemones and ranunculus. Uh, we'll be pre-sprouting and starting some of those early as well. Not all of them because we had such good luck with our anemones and ranunculus last year that I'm gonna follow with the majority of my corms. I'm gonna follow the exact schedule I did last year because they were so gorgeous. But I would like to try to eke out a few early blooms if we can do that. So we're gonna give that a try as well. So we'll probably be doing that in the next few days. The process is, well, it's not similar to what we did today, so it'll be different. If you are wanting to start dahlias early, potting them up like I am, or even the pre-sprouting process, uh, unless you have a really good area with heat and high light, I probably wouldn't start them until a little bit later. Um, so four to six weeks before your average last frost for us, that would be March, so I am early. Um, fully expecting to possibly have to pot these up even, which I'm totally fine doing just because it's so fun and I'm kind of desperate to get stuff growing. But you do have to have high light and high heat for them to be happy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.